Hey, 42 here. If you think it's about time to do something to protect our planet's ecosystems, then stick around until the end, because I have an inspiring recommendation from my friends at Planet Wild that you don't want to miss. Did you know that some birds have a built-in GPS that's so precise they can always return to the exact same nesting spot even after being away for years and having traveled thousands of miles across vast oceans and continents? It's a skill we humans would envy. I once considered calling Mountain Rescue after searching for my car in a multi-story for over 30 minutes. It's thoughts that birds exploit the Earth's magnetic field, star patterns, and even olfactory cues in the air to achieve such remarkable navigational feats. Take the bar-tailed godwit, which holds the record for the longest non-stop flight by a bird. One female specimen was recorded flying 8,435 miles non-stop. From Alaska to Tasmania, the journey took about nine days without landing once for rest or food. Furthermore, it did this across completely open ocean without any prominent landmarks to guide its way. Not even a Starbucks. Then there's the Arctic Tern, known for having the longest migration of any animal. This small bird travels from the Arctic to the Antarctic and back again every year. That's a journey spanning close to 25,000 miles, and somehow they never get lost. Over its 30-year lifespan, your average Arctic Tern will fly enough distance to equal going to the moon and back. Yet, despite this remarkable capability, the Arctic Tern isn't the goat of the avian world. Hold on a minute, goats don't fly. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is there's a much, much larger bird that is the undisputed master of the skies. To see one in flight is to witness one of the miracles of nature, and everything about it pushes the boundaries of what physics tells us should be possible. This winged enigma is found roaming the vast Arctic Ocean. It's the largest flying bird on Earth with a wingspan that stretches well over three meters. That's bigger than my car and my house, which is just this black box I'm trapped in. I don't even have a toilet. I've spent the past 10 years going in the garden center across the road. Anyway, this bird can fly further than most of us, yet it rarely beats its wings. It can live for over 60 years, yet it only breeds once every two years. Welcome to the wonderful world of the Wandering Albatross. Despite its awesome size, the Albatross is particularly well known for its ability to travel spectacularly far, often flying over 600 miles a day in search of food. And a single Wandering Albatross is expected to cover between 5 to 7 million miles in its lifetime. To put that into perspective, your average human will travel about half a million miles in his lifetime. And that includes travel in cars, trains, and aeroplanes. When one of these majestic seabirds takes to the air, it's truly a sight to behold. Its huge wings fan out as it glides with effortless grace, rarely needing to flap. Like an astronaut on a spacewalk, it appears to defy gravity. And it does something that very few other birds can do. It flies for days, even weeks on end, without ever once landing. In fact, an albatross can travel for years without returning to solid ground, only occasionally stopping to land on the water. It's no wonder then that these incredible creatures have been revered by mariners throughout time. During the Age of Sail, it was believed that the wandering albatross carried the souls of dead sailors, mostly because they are known to stalk ships for days on end, gliding effortlessly in the ship's wake. It's a rather haunting sight that has given rise to the saying to have an albatross around your neck. Which means one is carrying a large burden or is cursed. But how is it that these birds can stay aloft for so long? Especially when you consider an adult weighs up to 13 kilograms. The fact that it can get off the ground in the first place is miraculous. Never mind staying up there for weeks before coming down again. Well, it has a few devilishly clever adaptations that allow it to do the seemingly impossible. Obviously, its mighty wingspan of up to 3.5 meters is one of its greatest assets. Now, you probably hear that and think, yeah, it's basically a big seagull. But just allow me to try and visualize how enormous these things really are. Just one of its wings is as long as I am tall. And both of its wings are the same as two fully grown men standing on top of each other, 
which is highly relatable, of course, because we see that all the time when we go outside. And it's not just its wings that are grand. The albatross's hefty body is larger than a fully grown turkey. You're going to need a bigger oven to cook this bad boy. This is a man holding a pretty big turkey. And this is a man holding an albatross. I really shouldn't have to say this, but if you do happen to chance upon an albatross, please don't try to cook it. They're heavily protected. Like, you'll go to prison for life and get spanked by David Attenborough protected. A good way of determining how well a bird can fly is by measuring its wing loading. This is basically the ratio of a bird's mass to its wing area. Birds with low wing loading are generally better flyers because they're able to generate more lift. The wandering albatross has a very low wing loading. In fact, it's one of the lowest on Earth. These impressive wings are also perfectly formed with a long, slender profile. They're uncannily similar to those of an aeroplane. When in flight, air moves faster over the top of its wings than it does underneath, creating an area of low pressure on top of the wings, which in turn creates lift that keeps the bird in the air. Albatrosses also have a tendon locking mechanism that lets them lock their wings in an extended position, reducing muscular exertion. F***ing cheaters. Put all this together and the wandering albatross is able to take off and stay in flight in conditions so mild that most other birds would be grounded. The albatross is also a true pioneer when it comes to conserving energy. They do this through a technique called dynamic soaring, which sounds like something the Apple marketing team came up with. This bird has special sensory organs within its nostrils, which are able to detect subtle differences in the wind speed. Basically, it can smell the wind. It uses this power to constantly ride the boundary between faster winds up high and slower moving air near the water. Turning up into the faster air, the albatross is lifted higher. Then it plummets downwards at a staggering 70 miles per hour. As it sweeps back into the slower moving air, scarily close to the water's surface, the contrast in wind speed arrests its downward momentum and then slingshots it back up into the faster air once again. This cycle is repeated continuously, allowing it to optimally harness the wind's energy. Using dynamic soaring, the wandering albatross can travel vast distances without ever flapping its wings. In doing so, it exploits the energy within its environment and expends zero of its own. It's a ballet of aerodynamics with the vast expanse of the ocean as its stage. But what about water? Surely it needs to drink while soaring for days on end above the salty ocean. Well, the albatross's bill houses specialized salt glands. These work tirelessly to extract salt from the seawater they ingest, producing vital fresh water the bird relies on for hydration. And all that excess salt is efficiently excreted through their nostrils. If salt started coming out of my nostrils, I'd be hospitalized ASAP and my head would be x-rayed but apparently if you're a bird, it's more of a feature than a fault. But what's really remarkable about the wandering albatross is that it doesn't just fly for a long time, it lives for a long time too. How long? Well, in 1956, a mature Laysan albatross was ringed to keep a track of it. She was named Wisdom, and she must have been one smart cookie indeed, because she was found again in 2021, hatching yet another chick making her at least 70 years old. That makes Wisdom the oldest confirmed wild bird in the world. To put that into perspective, a sparrow lives for about three years. A mighty bald eagle lives for about 25. But albatrosses frequently survive over 60 years out in the wild. And the wild is a bloody terrifying place. Some say the albatross could live up to 100 years, but that's yet to be verified. Looking at the wandering albatross, it's clear that it's built for survival. They have incredibly low metabolic rates, meaning they need to eat less food and can spend longer in the air without stopping for a snack, which comes in handy because it's been known to travel up to 5,000 miles in one hunting trip just to find squid to feed to its young. That's the equivalent of me flying from London to Los Angeles just to grab some sushi for lunch. Yet, despite these fascinating adaptations and incredible feats of endurance, one of the most enchanting moments in the life of an albatross comes 
when they do touch ground, which they might only do once every few years. And what brings them back to dry land, you ask? Sex, obviously. It's always sex. <laughs> Suddenly, the islands dotting the Arctic Ocean become the stage for a mesmerizing dance. Both males and females engage in a series of coordinated movements. They preen each other, they do a bit of fencing with their bills. Then they make a selection of really fucking weird sounds in each other's faces. Specifically, they're known to perform sky calling, where they point their bills at the sky and make a chilling screaming sound, which kind of sounds like a thousand people burning in the fires of Mordor. An albatross can sometimes court its potential lover for hours, but it's important to be picky, because once a bond is established, albatross are monogamous, and they remain faithful to that partner for life. Which sounds impressive, but then you remember it spends most of its time on a sea-bound solo stag do doing somersaults, thousands of miles from home for years at a time. But even in their moments of solitude, when their mate might be thousands of miles away, some believe they stay connected through the wind. People, mostly hippies, say an albatross's partner can hear its calls, even on the other side of the planet. A poetic notion that is obviously complete bollocks. And yet, for all their majesty and marvel, the wandering albatross is vulnerable. Their primary threats come from longline fishing and plastic pollution. These birds often mistake plastic for prey, ingesting it and feeding it to their chicks. And the consequences can be lethal. Similarly, they frequently find themselves at the end of longline fishing hooks and drown. Watching such a formidable beast perish in such a cruel and unfair way is a very sad thing indeed. The wonderful wandering albatross has inspired countless stories, legends and songs over the centuries. They remind us that no matter how difficult life may seem, and no matter how impossible the challenges that lay in our paths, we can always take a moment and awe at the delicate dance of a beautiful bird as it soars across the ocean, proving that limits are made to be broken. Thanks for watching. If you want to do your part to save the albatross and other incredible animals on the verge of extinction, then check out Planet Wild. They're an environmental protection organization funding ecosystem restoration projects that are preserving our nature and wildlife. They carry out a new rewilding mission every month. And what I love about Planet Wild is their complete transparency. They document their work in a monthly video report on their YouTube channel, so you can actually see the difference they're making. In their latest video, you can see how they're protecting dolphins from mass tourism whilst also learning so much about them. As a supporter, you get to see your impact firsthand via YouTube and the Planet Wild app. I support Planet Wild because I want to make a direct impact on preserving nature, and I believe in taking small scale but noticeable action. So if you want to join a growing community making a real difference protecting our ecosystems, check out Planet Wild and consider becoming a supporter. I will cover the first month of your subscription for the first 200 people signing up with my code 42. And if you want to get to know them better first, then check out their latest mission video on their YouTube channel. Big thanks to Planet Wild for sponsoring this video and please don't forget to check them out because what they're doing is genuinely amazing.